A very warm welcome to all the new students. Uh, we are so glad to have you as a member of our FOM family and thank you once again for choosing MMU to start your learning journey and adventure with us. And to our beloved returning students, welcome back to another new trimester. So in my upcoming slides, I would like to share some information on matters pertaining to the teaching and learning in FOM that are aligned to the vision of MMU. I'll try to make it as short and sweet as possible. But uh, first of all, let me begin with a, with a very short introduction of myself. Uh, that, Ms. Dalila, can you please move on to the next slide? Um, my name is Lillian and I am the program coordinator for the Foundation in Management program. So if you have uh, any questions or any problems pertaining to your foundation studies, uh, you may drop me an email or as mentioned by Dr. Firus just now, we have three academic advisors for the Foundation in Management programs, which are Madam Aisha, Madam uh, Aziliana and Madam Rekha. So you may also refer to them if you have any questions yeah, or any problems. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, just to share with you a little bit on the concept of our university. Now, the concept of our university stands on the vision of a comprehensive ecosystem that stimulates the generation of new ideas for entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, industry integration, and promoting lifelong learning. So in MMU, we strive to be an industry trendsetter. And in order to do that, these three pillars play a very important role. And more importantly, in order for us to achieve this, we need to incorporate all of this into our teaching and learning. And as I proceed along with the slides, we're going to take just a quick look at how this is done. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so the first pillar is learning experience. Now, upon seeing the need to transform the learning environment to adapt to new student learning approaches, we have actually transformed the way we uh, teach students. So uh, from passive learning approach, we have transformed it to active learning approach. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, Dalila. Okay, now the way, uh, previous slide, please. Previous, okay. Um, the way knowledge is being acquired now is different from how it was acquired then. So previously, mostly all learning were passive, where the lecturers were the source of knowledge and information. But in the recent years, the focus has shifted from a teacher or a lecturer-centered classroom to a student or a learner-centered classroom. And with this type of framework, students are empowered to give ideas, to contribute, they basically have a voice because we encourage them to take part in the learning process. So in MMU, we encourage students to be active learners by being producers of knowledge and not just uh, consumers of knowledge. Next slide, please. Now, in order for us to empower students to be active learners, we use many different types of web tools. And basically, web tools are software that are available online. And so this learning delivery approach that we adopt is called blended learning. Now, blended learning is a combination of face-to-face -face learning and digital learning. Yeah, next slide, please. So the pictures that I've uploaded here are just a few samples of web tools that we use in the class. So this one that you're seeing here is called Padlet where it's like a platform where you are able to upload pictures and upload your work. So it becomes a sharing platform to all the students. Next slide. Uh, this one is a, a web tool called Snapper, or there's another web tool called Canva. And these web tools are interesting to actually create very fantastic, amazing uh, infographics. So if you haven't tried this out, uh, I urge you to just go and explore these web tools. Next. All right. Um, so I've uploaded some pictures of our FOM students. And what is interesting about looking at all these pictures are their facial expressions. Yeah, um, they seem happy. Uh, and probably because blended learning, it does encourage continuous learning and it supports gamification as well, which mostly all students look forward to. Yeah, next. Okay. The second pillar is called industry integration. Now, these two words, pretty much explains everything. And the two regular activities that we usually organize for foundation students are firstly, next please. Next, Dalila. Okay. So uh, one of the 
um, activities that we usually organize for foundation students are industrial talks. Now, with classes being online, we are not able to have a face-to-face -face session, but however, we still have online talks that we organize for students. And this is very important because it helps students understand the overall uh, workforce or the overall business processes. Yeah, So we get the industry players to come and speak to the students. Next slide, please. Now, secondly, we also used to organize industrial visits. Uh, this is also very important for students to get first-hand knowledge of what is happening in the industry. But obviously, and unfortunately, we're not able to organize uh, any visits this year. But let's look forward for a more positive year in 2021. Yeah? All right, next. Okay. The third pillar is called innovation and entrepreneurship. Now, in uh, FOM, uh, in Foundation in Management, we have one subject called the Introduction to Business Management. Now, this subject is made compulsory to all students across faculties. And the reason this subject is made compulsory to all students is because MMU has recognized the importance of entrepreneurship education in promoting entrepreneurship development and the economy. Yeah. Now, next please. Now, in this subject called Introduction to Business Management, students are being taught from scratch how to write a business plan, how to promote products, how to actually operate a business, manage the cash, uh, social responsibility skills, negotiation skills, and etc. So you learn a lot uh, from this subject. And all these pictures that you see um, here are, are actually pictures from the students' business week uh, during their business project. Again, um, for this subject, this year we are not able to carry out any activities due, due to the restriction of MCO. But the, the lecturer of this subject will make it as interesting and uh, for all of you who are taking this subject. Yeah? Next slide, please. Uh, these are just some more pictures to show you, uh, you know, how much fun the students had during their business week and appreciation week. Yeah? All right, next. All right. Now, what you see here is a program structure or is also known as a cost structure for the foundation in management program. Now, um, it consists of three trimesters. Uh, the first two trimesters will be a long trimester and the third trimester will be a short trimester. So for the new students, uh, your long trimester is a duration of 14 weeks and your short trimester is a duration of seven weeks. Now, in total, you will need to complete 14 subjects in a duration of one year. Yeah, uh, And I also need to emphasize this, you need to complete all the subjects with a minimum of grade C before you can proceed to your degree level. So if you get grades such as C- minus or a D+, plus, that is considered a fail. And if you do get any of these grades for any of the subjects, you know, you have to retake this subject. And, and, I, and the reason I'm emphasizing this is because we have had many cases where students, they misunderstand the grading system that you have. Yeah. So all this information that I'm presenting is also in your handbook. So please make sure that you keep your handbook with you throughout your, your one academic year. Next, Dalila. All right. Now, uh, in your final trimester, which is your trimester three, you'll be given uh, a chance to choose your preferred choice. Uh, what would you like to major in or specialize in? So what you see in these slides are uh, specializations that we have in Malacca. There are a total of six specializations, and there is also a total of uh, seven specializations in Cyberjaya. So you are able to choose any one of these specializations. If you're not sure which program you'd like to specialize in, speak to me, speak to your academic advisor, speak to any of your lecturers so that you get the idea of or the hang of it or what you would like to pursue in yeah um, as for the minimum cgpa requirement uh, mostly all subjects require a minimum cgpa of 2.0 except bachelor of financial engineering bachelor of accounting and bachelor of finance so these these three specializations you need to have a minimum cgpa of 2.5 in order to pursue uh, these three uh, bachelor programs yeah okay next slide please Next slide, Dalila. 
All right, so this is my last slide. So before I end my presentation, I would just like to uh, give you a few words of advice. You know, um, I, I do see many familiar faces here. So hello to all my family, my students here. Um, before I end my presentation, I would like to just tell you, you know, be yourself, uh, be awesome, be ready to do great things and always believe that you are capable of amazing things. Tell yourself it's going to be a fantastic year full of learning and growing together. I cannot wait to go back to campus to meet all of you. But until then, stay safe. And um, I send you my sprinkles of love and luck. I wish you best of luck. You have my best interest as you progress forward. Yeah. Uh, with that, I thank you and I end my presentation. Next slide. I'm done. If you have any questions, yeah, you can ask me or you can email me those questions. Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm presenting for Diploma in Management. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, but we cannot see you. Ah, okay, apologies because I've got issue with the camera. Okay. I hope it's okay. okay. But voice is clear. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, welcome to Diploma in Management. Can I just have um, students in Diploma in Management, can I see you if, uh, typing something in the chat box, say like hello or hi? Diploma in Management. Welcome to Diploma in Management. Okay. Hello. Yeah, all right. Hi, Jasmine, Bavish, Chakra. Okay. All right, all right, Nana, Ryan, Hakim. Okay. Uh, my name is Anissa. Okay, I am your uh, program coordinator for Diploma in Management, and I'll be also taking one of the class for this trimester. Okay. All right, uh, Dalila, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Diploma in Management, um, when you come to join our Diploma in Management, uh, you will actually gain the following. It focuses on equipping you, the students, with knowledge of business management, concept and skill required in the job market. So this is actually important because the Diploma program actually prepares you for the job market. As you know, a Diploma qualification is recognized uh, quite highly sought after in the job market. And so we prepare you with broad-based knowledge, technical, operational, and entrepreneurial skills. You saw some of the pictures just now. I don't have much pictures in my slide, but uh, you get some idea from the previous ones uh, shared by Ms. Lillian. So the activities, the entrepreneurial skills that our students do in this faculty. Okay, so you're exposed to that. We have a very specific subject called entrepreneurship. Um, so you will be exposed to so many different skills and knowledge um, to prepare you in the area of business management while at the same time we develop your desire for lifelong learning and career development. Uh, as you know, the diploma program also allows you to proceed to higher level of study. So in this case, you can proceed to our degree program. And this is where our diploma in management is designed in such a way that it uh, match or it prepares you for the degree program in our faculty where you can actually do what we call credit transfer. Uh, I will explain that further later where the subjects that you do in your diploma program, uh, you can actually carry it to your degree program. So you can actually complete your degree program faster. Okay, so that's the advantage here. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I'll quickly run through. Um, this is actually the structure or what we call the subjects that you'll be taking in your diploma in management. A total of 90 credit hours. Okay, so we go by what we call credit hours. So the diploma in management is a two-year program and you take a total of 90 credit hours. So there are, the subjects are divided into four different types. The yellow or orange one is called the MPU or Mata Pelajaran Umum. Uh, the green one is called University Subject. There's two University Subject, English and Communication, which basically uh, brush you in your soft skills and communication. Uh, the bulk of the subject is called uh, the Core Subjects. Uh, I'll, see, I'll show you later the details. And the pink one is the Major Subject. So uh, the Core Subjects and the Major Subjects uh, we'll see in the next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, here are the bulk of the subjects that you'll be taking in the diploma program. All right, as you can quickly see, 
uh, the subjects prepare you with broad knowledge in business management and also expose you to technical skills such as computer technology. Um, yeah, uh, so a mixture of econs, finance, marketing. All right. So these are all um, foundation. Uh, sorry, uh, basic information, basic knowledge that one needs um, to develop in to understand the business management field. Okay. Also, we develop you in thinking skills, uh, digital literacy, and of course, you see the entrepreneurship. Okay. So these are called core subjects because these are actually uh, common subjects for diploma program so you are now in the diploma in management and our faculty have in the pipeline to offer uh, a few other diploma programs so core subjects mean all diploma students will be taking the similar subjects okay however if for diploma in management this is where you have what we call specialization or major so the next slide please next slide okay Major subjects, you have seven major subjects with a total of 21 credit hour. Uh, so as you can see, these subjects actually prepare you specialization, what we call like a major or specialization for management. So subjects such as international business, human resource management, introduction to project management, and so forth. Okay, now, uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is a quick um, to have to expose you to what we call your program structure. Now this is very important, okay? Uh, you are currently in the July 2020 intake. So as you can see, there are a total of uh, six trimesters over two years. So you will be following these program structures. Program structure, these are the subjects that you'll be taking. So uh, a total of six subjects this trimester, seven the next trimester. And in trimester three, is going to be a short trimester. So you only take three subjects. So all you can see uh, below there, the total credit hours, the total of 90. Okay. And in your final trimester, this is where you do your practical training. Okay, and this is where it will help you to prepare you for the work environment. Okay, now a quick look at the slides, show you all the subjects. And as I said earlier on, from this diploma program, you can actually proceed to our degree program and you can do what we call credit transfer. For example, uh, I give you an example. Uh, let's say you've taken the subject organizational behavior here entrepreneurship here okay human resource management uh, you will see later in for example in our uh, bachelor of business management similar subjects appear so you can actually do what we call credit transfer if you sign up for our degree program you do not have to take the same subject again okay uh, of course you will have to fulfill the requirement which means to say you have to pass the subject okay and that is a, a, a c Okay, just like what um, the student just now mentioned, it's very important that you must actually know uh, what pass C is pass, C minus uh, is not considered a pass. Okay, so this is actually um, some of the information that you need to know. So if you have any queries about the program, please contact me. I'm your program coordinator and also contact your advisors. Okay, so I think I'll complete here for our diploma in management. Thank you. Thank you, Panisa. So next we're inviting Dr. Lan Muyen to present on diploma in finance. Hi, can you see me? Yes. 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 Okay. It's, um. Th th thank you so much for um. Uh, um. 
Dr. Fayouz. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Fayouz, for the presentation. So, um, my name, so can, can I just have a, um, a shout out from student of uh, but what, Diploma Finance, Diploma in Finance? Any student from Diploma in Finance present here? Yes, Bradley mentioned just now. Okay. Um, Okay, so my name is Nguyen, as um, was introduced by Dr. Fairus. I'm the, diplom uh, the pro program coordinator for uh, this uh, DIF. Um, okay, so a very welcome to Diploma in Finance program in MMU. I'm so happy to receive you, um, you today, you all today, okay, all the students basically from other uh, programs as well. So to help you to get started with the program, um, I would like to give you a short briefing about this program. Okay, so please do not hesitate to, to stop me for any questions if you're not clear about anything during these presentations. Um, so in, in this briefing, I will present the following items that also will be available in your student handbook uh, given by the faculties. Next, please. Um, this program is um, designed to produce ethical diploma students, uh, diploma graduates, um, and who possesses not just only technical and analytical skills, but also various soft skills. Next. Next slide, please. Yes. So upon um, the graduation, upon the completion of this program, uh, you are expected to achieve these eight important program learning outcomes. Huh? Um, the first one, uh, as a graduate, you will have a strong fundamental knowledge of finance, concepts, and theories. And this will definitely allow you uh, to understand, to adapt to any kind of change in management and business environment. Uh, you will be equipped with fundamental technical principles as well, so that you can lead, you can facilitate, you can support the economic development in the industry. Number two, okay, as a graduate, okay, graduate, you will have the knowledge, you will have the skills, and especially in those areas of finance and management to assist in the decision-making process. Number three, you will be equipped with broad and comprehensive knowledge that enable you to provide effective and practical solutions to management in, you know, on, on various kinds of business problems faced by the industries from time to time. Fourth, as a graduate, you will be able to convey, you will be able to communicate your ideas, you'll be able to demonstrate those ideas effectively as a manager. Fifth, as a graduate, you will be able to develop yourself as an outstanding leader through a good teamwork and in which you will be capable of working not just independently, but as well as a team player. Six, as a graduate, you'll be able to you know, you will be aware of, of the code of ethics and professional obligations at the workplace in order to access, you know, with integrity, with respect and professionalism. Seven, um, as a graduate, you will develop a love for knowledge. You will continue seeking for new knowledge in order to be an effective manager. You will also be able to identify various career paths upon your graduation uh, from this diploma program. And finally, you'll be able to demonstrate the ability to analyze business problems from different perspectives. You will also be able to dem demonstrate different kinds of skills needed to be successful in the corporate world. Next, please. Yeah, next slide, please. So in, in this semester, uh, which is semester one, um, starting from July to 20, 2020, you will have six subjects as listed over here. Okay, I will just highlight it in yellow. Next, please. Um, in the diploma program, uh, in this diploma program, you will have, you will need to take about 91 credit hours for all listed subjects. And in, in this semester, you will have one MPO subject, one university subject, and the rest, the rest will be under the core cool subject. So I will put number one until number six over here. Next, please. So um, it is uh, there's one thing that's so important for you to know that in order for you to register for industrial training, which is going to be next year for you, you need to complete 45 credit hours in the first year of your diploma, the uh, uh, DIF. Uh, and for other major finance subjects, you need to pass fundamental finance one subjects, 
So make sure you pass the subjects, okay? Okay, next please. So your grades are determined by um, the marks received by uh, you know, your lectures at the end of the semester. And these grades are then transferred to S points. So you need to get C in order to pass a subject. Now, if you have C minus or D, it's called that it's conditional pass. It means you have to take a supplementary exam and you need to pass that, okay? So make sure that you have C and above. Huh? Okay, next please. So your CGPA are computed uh, by using these formulas. Now, at the end of your degree, your CGPA will determine the class, uh, like class one, you know, first class, second class, or third class that you belong to. Next, please. So please ensure uh, to make a study plan. Uh, you should discuss this one with your academic advisors at the beginning of the semester, um, and your registration must be completed before the semester starts. So the semester is going to start next week. Make sure you do that by this way, okay? Now, within the first two weeks of each semester, you can register new subjects. Uh, within the first two weeks, you can register for new or you can drop new what are called subjects. Next, please. Now, during the, sh during the long and short semester. So during long semester, you have 14 weeks and short semester, you have seven weeks. So this semester right now is semester one and the next one semester two, they are long semester. So just remember that the maximum number of credit hours that you can register for each semester. Now for semester, short semester, you have maximum of 10 credit hours, okay, to register and minimum six. Now for long semester, like semester one and two, you have a maximum number of credit hours, which is about 20 credit hours, or between about six or seven subjects. Huh? And minimum is 12 credit hours, so convert that to around about four subjects. Okay, so make sure that you register at least with the minimum credit hours. Next, please. Now, um, next, please. Um, it is so important for you to uh, know that, that you cannot withdraw any subject after week two. Uh, of each semester. Now, if you do so, there's no refund will be granted. Huh? So if you withdraw it in the first two weeks, then you get 100%. Yeah. Sorry to disturb. Okay, I just want to let the students know. Okay? The uh, policies and procedures that Dr. Muya is sharing here is applicable to all students. So I think it's good also to all other students to actually listen to the procedures for refund tuition fees and whatnot, uh, because the other program coordinators will not be explaining this. Okay, uh, although I think the exam unit should do a, should brief you on this, but it's good that since Dr. Muya is covering, uh, just pay attention because most of this procedure in terms of credit transfer information fees are applicable to all programs, to all students. Thank you. Please proceed, Dr. Nguyen. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Farris. Um, okay, the next one, please. Yeah. Okay, in, in special events such as national services or serious illness or financial problems, you can apply for leave of absence, you call LOIA. And, and this application must be done before the semester starts, uh, before the leave is taken. So during this period that you take your leave of absence, you cannot register to any course in any institutions. Now, except for national services and medical reasons, the period of your leave will be counted as part of your candidature period. Now, if you fail to register for any subjects after this leave of absence, your status will be changed to as dismissed. Okay, so you can discuss this further with your academic advisor. You can contact me, you can talk to me or academic advisor just to make sure that you know this, uh, um, this policy. Next, please. Now, um, in your handbooks, you will find um, on the last few pages a number of important links, okay, that you must be familiar with. Okay, just go back and have a look at that. Now, uh, th those links will give you where to get your timetable, where to register for subjects, where to get important announcements made by the university, by the, by the dean, by the presidents, by lecturers. Uh, and MMLS portal is so important for you as well because you can communicate directly with the lecturers, uh, with the lecturers in charge of subjects that you register. You get lecture notes and other kind of announcements. So make sure you know all this link. Next, please. Now, um, your advice to meet your academic advisors to get advisors from time to time, okay? Um, for those who have the CGPA that less than 2.5, it's so important for you to make this frequent 
what a good meeting your super uh, advisors or huh? your advisors to get uh, her or, or 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 his advisors you know how to to find ways how to improve your cgpa okay and there are there are surrogate parents in the university you have parents at home and in the university you have you know your academic advisor your lecturers they are surrogate parents to you they would give you all whatever advices you need because one upon a time they are in your shoes okay so don't hesitate and don't be shy just contact them whenever that you face any kind of difficulties or obstacles okay uh, next now if you wish uh next next slide please yeah uh if you wish to pursue a to a degree course okay this is the following path that you can go for okay after this you can you can register for be a bachelor of finance or bachelor of financial engineering so this the path that you can go for next please okay now at the end of your uh, student handbook okay you will have academic uh, calendar so make sure that you have this copy with you hold that with you okay for this semester so it's very important there's some important deadlines a list of the subjects and lectures in charge uh, in this semester and so given as well just make sure you have that you know in in your notes you know uh, that you need to call whenever you contact them their email the phone number whatsoever huh? so uh, th this is a very piece important a piece of document for you to pursue for you know uh, your study during this semester okay the last slide please okay um so with that i wish you all the best um, in your study during the semester uh, please contact me via email okay if you need to to consult me anything i will set up a google meet or whatever you know online meeting like this uh, with you and do let me know if you are not clear on any part of that okay i love to see you in the campus i miss all the students okay that's just like other lectures and we wish that this mco is going to be over soon and so that we can meet our students, see you in person. And thank you so much. All the best. Okay, hi, Salam alaikum and very good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm Hamza Tung, um, Program Coordinator for Bachelor of Accounting Program. So can I have um, the accounting student who has enrolled to this program just say hi, salam or hello? on the chat box. So I have an idea how many of you are actually enrolled to this program. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right then. So nice to meet you and congrats because you have chosen this program to further your study. And I believe that most of you must be from the Faculty of Management Diploma, diploma or a diploma we haven't have any diploma yet, right? Remember, none has been graduated or from the foundation. So. Um, so let us have a look what you are going to have for this program throughout these four years of study. So next, Dalila. Okay, first of all, um, the program objective whereby has been listed here. The first objective, we are preparing this program for you to be able to become a qualified professional accountant once you graduate later on. And then the next objective is for you not just familiar with the accounting situation or with the accountant industry, but we are also preparing you for whatever area, including auditing area, taxation area, and ICT area. So that means we are preparing you um, to be able to work in whatever kind of workplace, not just in the accounting background, but also in the taxation background, in the economics background, and including the ICT workplace environment as well. So for your information, program uh, accounting program is the only program in FOM that has a four years of study because it is in accordance to the MIA uh, requirement. And then uh, accounting program also is the only program in FOM that has 10 learning outcome, whereby once you're graduated, you must be able to achieve all those learning outcomes whereby we prepare you to be knowledgeable, to be competent, have all the skills and techniques in whatever business decision, aware about all the social, cultural, global and environmental issues. We also will always enhance your awareness with regards on ethics and social responsibility because once you are in the accounting um, area, honesty, um, integrity, that will be 
something that you need to uphold in your working environment later on. And then we also prepare you to have a good communication skill, able to work in a team. And we are also preparing you not just looking at uh, bookkeeping, not just looking at calculating numbers, but we are also preparing you to be able to use whatever ICT technologies that we have um, in the environment. And then you are also be able to solve whatever decision making, whatever operational and strategic solution needed in the business. And we are also preparing you for a lifelong learning and whatever entrepreneurial skills also will be embraced to all the graduates that will be come out from this accounting program in this university. Okay, so we have 10 learning outcomes to be achieved and all the subjects will be achieved, will be covered all these 10 learning outcomes. So next, Dalila. So this will be your program structure, okay, whereby it consists of four years of study. And for your cohort, that means for those who have um, registered for this trimester, for this academic year, your practical training will be on the third year. And for accounting program, your practical training will be six months practical training. Okay, we hope that um, during that time, there is an opportunity for you to go and work in the business that has been um, allowed and applied. Okay, so for this semester, you have five subjects to be taken. And make sure, as what well being reminded by the rest of my colleagues just now, you have to hold this program structure for you to do it as a reference. So do not take away, do not um, delete uh, your handbook. So kindly save it in a special folder for you to remind, for you to refer to from time to time what will be your cost structure. And be careful in the accounting program, most of the first year subjects and second year subjects are the prerequisite subject to further for your third year and fourth year subject. That means if you want to register for the third year and fourth year subject, you must pass your prerequisite paper first. So be careful with that. So to avoid any delay in your study, okay, for you to be able to graduate on time, make sure you have to take a look Okay, which subject are the most common prerequisite subject? So I will give you some guidance with regards on that. So take a look on the next slide. So all in all, total credit hours that you will be taken for this four year duration. Uh, someone else is presenting, right? Uh, can I have back, Dalila, can I have back <laughs> the slide? You lose. Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay then. So, total 146 credit hours for these four years of study, whereby almost 80%, more than 80% will be the core subject for the program, come from the core subject of the program. And the rest will be from compulsory subject, which consists of 18 credit hour, elective subject. Elective subjects here means you have a choice to choose which subject to be taken on the particular semester that we have put up in the course structure. So you can refer to the course structure. And then you have six credit hours for your industrial training. Okay, next. So out of, the, uh, out of that core subject, uh, this is whereby I give you a guidance, which subject will be the prerequisite. So your major subject can be divided into financial accounting area, management accounting area, auditing area, taxation area, AIS area, and finance area. So I have put up in terms of the level. For example, take a look at the financial accounting area at the top there. To be able for you to register for financial accounting reporting one and financial accounting reporting two, you must pass fundamental of financial accounting. 
and to be able to register for corporate accounting one and corporate accounting two, you must pass both fundamental of financial accounting and FAR one, FAR two. So that's the meaning of prerequisite. So I have given a guidance here. Generally, those who are on the top level of each area there, that would be the prerequisite for the next level. For example, another one, management accounting. For you to register for advanced management accounting, that will be a third year subject. The prerequisite for that will be MA1 and MA2. Same here, if you want to register for MA2, you have to pass first the MA1. And similar goes for auditing, similar goes for taxation, AIS and finance. So you have to be careful with that with regards on the prerequisite subject. So you have to pass those subjects in order to register for the next level. So you have to take care of that. Uh, so for, for you to be able to graduate on time, kindly make sure you have to pass first all the prerequisite subjects. So generally the level one and level two that I have given a guide here, okay? All right then. So next slide. So these are the other subjects that not related to accounting, but it's actually essential, important for you, especially when you graduate later on, whereby you have management subject, strategy subject, and so on. So I have listed here. Next. And these are the elective subject. So generally you are giving an option to choose elective subject basically in your second year you can refer from the course structure which semester that you have elective subject so these are the list of elective subject that you can choose during that semester but depends on which subject being offered during that semester and for your information we have three elective subject which are business tax planning tax compliant and advanced financial reporting and these three elective subjects are actually a professional paper from ICAEW. So that means if you um, if you want to be reducing your exemption if you are uh, planning to take another professional um, examination in this case ICAEW so my advice, you are highly encouraged to take either of these elective subjects. So this is a special arrangement between MMU accounting program with ICAEW. Later on, we are going to have another elective as well for MICPA. So hold on, we, we, will, uh, we will hear the good news later. Okay, all right, next. And then this is with regards on practical training, which will be on your third year study later on, um, whereby you need to choose which company, a suitable company, and basically it will be an audit firm or any global business services kind of company to be, um, to be practicing your practical training, and it will be six months duration. Next. And... This slide just to show you, for you to have an idea how the assessment will be made, whereby for all the subjects, 65% of all the subjects will be from final exam assessment, 35% will be from the continuous assessment. So all subjects need to follow this weightage of assessment. So your grade major weightage of your grade will depend on the final exam. And for the practical training, 40% of your assessment from the employer's evaluation, weekly reports, 25%, and you also need to prepare final report for your practical training, 35%. So this is how the assessment will be developed for each of the subject throughout your study. Okay, next. And we in MMU, almost all the professional body recognize our degree and you can have exemption if you want to pursue your professional exam later on, whereby we are being exempted, we are being recognized by MIA, we are being recognized by ACCA, so it will be exempted 
15 papers, uh, 9 papers, CIMA, ICAEW, CPPA, and MICPA. So almost all the professional accounting body recognize our degree program. So congrats for those who have chosen enroll to this accounting program in MNU. Then next. So that's all. Um, so I just wish all of you all the best. So be what the same, be serious with your study. And I hope we can meet face to face. Actually, I really miss all the students. So I'm really, really, hopefully we can meet physically in the campus later on. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Uh, on Hafsatul, next we invite the program creators for finance program. I think first one would be Bachelor of Finance, Dr. Kwan. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, uh, Dr. Fairoz. Uh, I will present for both, yeah? Today okay. I will present for both, okay? All right, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning. Uh, hope everybody is in good health. Okay, I'm Darihan Selamat, okay, the program coordinator for Bachelor of Financial Engineering. And my friends, uh, Dr. Kwan, yeah, uh, is the program coordinator for uh, Bachelor of Finance. So for today, I will present for both um, program, yeah, because uh, both program is under finance unit, and both program related to managing uh, money, yeah, in order to uh, added value and also to create wealth, right? So I will start with uh, Bachelor of Finance first. Okay, so uh, for this Bachelor of Finance, okay, uh, our aim is to produce graduate with in-depth knowledge, critical thinking, and analytical skill in financial decision making. And it also aims to create wealth through art and science, yeah, art and science, especially uh, fintech knowledge in managing financial resources, yeah. Uh, next, Dalila. Okay, so uh, the core content component yeah, for this Bachelor of Finance, we will emphasize on financial analytical skill. Okay, meaning that uh, the skill is referred to the ability uh, to collect data, then to uh, analyze the information, uh, problem solving, and also uh, to make a decision based on the information uh, that you uh, collected before. Okay, and then uh, for these uh, purposes, okay, uh, we have corporate financial strategies, uh, financial der derivative, and other subject. Okay, for this Bachelor of Finance also, uh, we are emb embedded, yeah, you are embedded with uh, IT skill, okay, uh, such as we have uh, digital transformation technologies, uh, financial modeling, and etc. Okay, we also uh, expose uh, the student to financial technology, okay, meaning that this is the combination of uh, finance and technology, yeah, or the use of uh, technology uh, to deliver the financial services uh, and product to the consumer. Okay, next. Okay, in terms of uh, career prospect, yeah, finance offer a wide range uh, of career prospect, yeah, to our graduate, uh, uh, to our graduate, yeah, uh, because uh, every industry needs, yeah, finance people. Okay, you can work in uh, fund management companies, yes, yeah, such as junior financial analysts, traders, or research analysts. Okay, you can also work in uh, banking and financial institution. Okay, you can work as credit consultant, compliance consultant, mortgage consultant, yeah, financial planner, and also a trade finance officer. Okay, you can also work in uh, startup companies. Okay, you can work in non-financial companies also, yeah, as financial analysts, corporate finance, uh, and also in a corporate finance uh, office. Okay, uh, next, Talina. Okay, then uh, for Bachelor of Financial Engineering, okay, uh, so our aim is to equip the candidate with the technology blend in IT, mathematics, and finance, which can provide the skill in financial modeling that important in financial technology, yeah, or uh, fintech, yeah, uh, uh, in uh, nowadays, yeah. So uh, the difference between uh, Bachelor of Financial Engineering and uh, Bachelor of Finance just now, okay, uh, there is an added value in Bachelor of Financial Engineering because in financial engineering we will combine um, finance. Uh, with uh, mathematics and also uh, IT, 
Yeah, so uh, you will learn more uh, mathematics and also uh, IT subject yeah, under this Bachelor of Financial Engineering. Uh, next. Okay, so uh, the core content components uh, under this Bachelor of Financial Engineering. Okay, uh, first we will focus on financial and mathematical modeling yeah, for business decision making. So therefore, we will have uh, subjects such as mathemat mathematical uh, programming. We have stochastic process, applied probabilities, Monte Carlo, and also financial modeling. Then we have IT subject, yeah, because uh, uh, this uh, program also is uh, information technology driven. So we have IT subjects such as uh, such as digital transformation technologies, computer programming, uh, software engineering, and database management system. Okay, under this uh, Bachelor of Financial Engineering also, we will expose the student to financial technology, yeah, fintech, yeah, that is combination, uh, combination of finance and technology, yeah, the, the, the technology and innovation, yeah, uh, that aims uh, to uh, compete with the financial um, methods uh, in terms of delivery and also in uh, financial services. Okay, then we... Um, uh, we have okay. There is uh, this this an uh, additional yeah under Bachelor of Financial Engineer Engineering in which the student have to come up with the research project yeah. So uh, for this research project yeah, it, uh, you can collect the primary and secondary data okay. If you are using the secondary secondary data, you can use a uh, Bloomberg database and others uh, and the subject which is related to research project is uh, econometric yeah especially when you want to analyze the data that you collected and also the research method yeah so uh, so meaning that for bachelor of financial engineering yeah you will not only having a strong fundamental knowledge in finance but you will also have a strong knowledge in mathematics and also IT okay next Okay, in terms of career prospect, yeah, same like Bachelor of Finance just now, yeah, you can work in uh, many uh, uh, many companies or industry. You can work in banking and also uh, finance industry. Yeah, so you can work in a bank, you can work in the financial institution, you can work in non-financial companies, and also uh, uh, another uh, additional for the Bachelor of Financial Engineering, you can also work as financial engineer, yeah, and also financial consultant as in a software and technology companies. Okay, next. Okay, based on the uh, study done, yeah, uh, by... Uh, by Malaysian uh, more sought after job in 2019. Okay, finance is one of the most in demand job yeah, in 2019. Okay, the first one is computer science, followed by engineering and finance. So on the same time also, uh, financial analysts yeah, have been uh, highlighted as one of the top trending job in digital industry. So don't worry, yeah, there are many uh, work available, yeah, for our uh, graduate. Okay, next please. Okay, so in terms of program structure, okay, so this is the program structure for uh, Bachelor of Finance and BFE. Okay, uh, for Bachelor of Finance, we have 122, yeah, 122 credit hours. And for Bachelor of Financial Engineering, we have 137, okay? This is because BOF is a three years program, whereas for BFE is three and a half years program. Okay, so uh, for the subject, yeah, we classify the subject into university subject, or it's also known as MPU. Then we have foundation subject. So usually for this foundation subject, uh, this is the subject that all students uh, must, uh, all the business students, yeah, must take. And then we have a core subject, a major subject. Major subject is more related yeah, to the program, yeah, more related to BOF and more related to BFE. And then we have elective subject. Yeah, for elective subject, okay, we offer the same elective for both programs, yeah, BF, uh, BOF and BFE. Okay, we have uh, seven yeah, elective subject in which um, that subject is offered uh, 
uh, different uh, elective subject offer in a different semester. So from that seven subject, the student can choose uh, four subjects. Yeah? So the total uh, credit hours for elective is uh, 12 hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, we also offer industrial training yeah, for both programs. Okay, the uh, industrial training um, is for 12, yeah, 12 weeks, yeah, for 12 weeks, okay, uh, that, uh, that is prepare you for uh, industry, okay. So, uh, this uh, industrial training uh, will be offered in the last semester, yeah, for both programs, yeah, BOF and also BFE, okay. Okay, so um, you have to complete, yeah, all the subject with minimum grade of C. Okay, with the minimum grade of C and uh, for BOF you must complete in three years and BFE you must complete in three and a half years. Okay next Talina. Okay so this is the cost structure for Bachelor of Finance. Okay so this is the list of subject yeah for each of the su uh, subject categories or subject classification. Okay what are the subject under MPU yeah under uh, uh, fundamental under core subject industrial training uh, the specialization and also elective yeah so this is the structure that you have to follow okay next and this is the uh, the program uh, i mean the the list of subject for uh, bachelor of financial engineering yeah so you have you will have more subject compared to the bof because your program is three and a half years okay so, uh, so for Bachelor of Financial Engineering, you will have a combination of subject. Yeah, you will have finance subject, you will have IT, and also you will have uh, mathematics. Yeah. So, uh, for both program, you should follow this program structure. Yeah, in order to make sure that you will uh, graduate on time and also to avoid problem in the future. Yeah. For example, clashing problem. Yeah, and you must make sure that uh, you should pass your prerequisite before you can uh, proceed yeah, with the uh, advanced subject. So let's say if you have a problem, for example, if you uh, fail uh, one of the subject, yeah, especially the prerequisite, so you have to uh, go and see your program coordinator. You can come and see me or you can go and see uh, Dr. Kwan or our head of unit, uh, Dr. Tay. So we will help you to rearrange. Yeah, we will help you to rearrange the program structure. Yeah, in order to make sure that uh, you can graduate on time. Yeah. So uh, we will also advise you. Yeah, on what subject that you have to register on that particular semester. Okay. Next. Okay. So uh, these are some activities uh, that uh, have been done in two thousand nineteen. Okay, we have stock challenge, we have industrial visit, we have a uh, career talk, and we also have industrial talk. Yeah, for example, we have Busan Malaysia visit, we have a uh, CFA career day, yeah, uh, the talk by HSBC, yeah, uh, the field trip, and we also, uh, and our students also participate in a uh, PNB, uh, PNB uh, quiz and we also give a visit yeah, to PNB. Okay, and uh, last year, yeah, in 2019, okay, we able to get fourth place yeah, uh, in the PNB quiz in the varsity. Okay, but for this year, uh, because of the uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19, okay, not much activity that can be done, but we still proceed with the um, industrial talk, yeah, uh, in which we organize the online, yeah, online industrial talk. Okay, uh, ho hopefully, yeah, if every everything is okay, so next year we can uh, start, yeah, with uh, these activities again, All right? Okay, next please. Okay, so this is some uh, photo or picture yeah, of activities that we organized in 2019. Okay, next, Tanina. Okay, so uh, that is for BOF and BFE. Okay, if you have any query, you can email me or you can uh, contact Dr. Kwan and also uh, Dr. Teh. So, uh, thank you so much and all the best. Okay, thank you, Puan Zarehan. Next, we'd like to invite Dr. Tan Siao Kian, Program Coordinator for Bachelor of Business Management. All to you, Dr. Tan. Okay, good morning. 
Uh, welcome, BBM students. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, first of all, of course, we, I would like to welcome our BBM students. And I just now I saw that uh, Sri Ren Ren is already here, right? So, and uh, welcome the rest as well. Uh, can uh, next, Dalila, please? Okay. So, just. I uh, want to brief you about the value uh, propositions of our program. So we try to uh, incubate uh, young entrepreneurial business management leaders to success beyond the fourth industrial revolution. So we emphasize on building the entrepreneurial leaders and we also emphasize on soft skills development. And of course, because now it's Industrial Revolution 4.0, our students will also be taking uh, will, will be will also taking the uh, some of the this IT uh, subjects which are uh, important in current uh, era. Next, please. And you will be equipped with entrepreneurial leadership as well as industrial revolution uh, 4.0 skills. And for your, for your future, right? So you can be the innovators, in, intrapreneurs, entrepreneurs, and future leaders in any kind of companies. It means uh, actually uh, all companies, we need management expert and you will be the expert. Okay, next, please. And these are some activities uh, organized by uh, FOM uh, and you will be have a lot of this opportunity to uh, uh, participate in this kind of challenges and this kind of competition. So please join all these activities because it will train you to think critically and it will also train you to really uh, come up with your business mind, business idea so that you will uh, be able to become an entrepreneur, right? Your own boss. Next, please. And this is the uh, uh, pictures and we have a lot of these uh, students from different uh, faculty and uh, come together and you will uh, be able to come up with a lot of this interesting business idea. Next please, Elena. And these are some fundamentals. These are the 13 fundamental subjects that you need to take for BBM. And please, I will uh, advise you to strongly follow uh, the, your uh, program structure that you will be given or you already had in your head, right? So please follow the program structure so that you will be a graduate on time. Next, please. And these are the core subjects uh, uh, in which uh, all veteran students need to take. And next, please. And you will be uh, given the opportunity to choose from those uh, these in, uh, interesting elective subjects as well. And we offer uh, certain subjects in trimester one, and uh, and we offer different subjects in trimester two and three as well. So please choose the uh, subjects that you think okay, I, I like this subject. So you just take so that you will be uh, able to explore to uh, other area as well. Okay, I think uh, next please. Yeah, that's it from uh, BBM. And if you ha have any questions, please email me or email Dr. Ojo, who is the uh, academic advisor for uh, for this round of students. And uh, and of course, you can uh, just email me or just uh, email Dr. Ojo. That's it. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, next, we'd like to invite next Dr. Tan Gui Chen for digital marketing. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fairuz. Can you hear me? All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kwan. All right, uh, now let us go through the Bachelor of Marketing. I'm the Program Coordinator of Bachelor of Marketing. My name is uh, Dr. Tan Boy Chen. Next, please. Next. All right, first, uh, let's look at the value propositions. Value propositions. For the marketing, it's very important uh, for value proposition of Bachelor of Marketing. In fact, it offers the up-to-date courses which are aligned with the digital uh, trend within the industry. In this program, besides offering the traditional marketing courses, we do offer the digital marketing courses as well. So with this, it provides an in-depth understanding of the marketing concept and is supplemented with the fundamental and practical knowledge in order to create the effective marketing strategies in both local and overseas setting. So if we look at the courses, uh, the popular courses or even the uh, online or digital marketing courses, we do have the internet marketing, seminar in web marketing, technology and innovation marketing. And interestingly, we have the product planning and management whereby students, they do require to develop a new product or even a prototype. 
and we do have the event marketing, CSR, and also the additional ICT subjects together with other traditional marketing courses. Next, please. And what are the career prospects? So uh, in summary, in fact, all industry needed marketing staff. All marketing graduate, in fact, you are highly demanded. All right, you're highly demanded and also needed by all the industry. So the examples of the career prospects, you can see that you can work as the marketing manager in any industry, social media executive, branding experts, promotion, events, marketing research services, or even some other uh, prospective. Next, please. And when we look at the Bachelor of Marketing, you can see that it comes with the MPU courses with the credit hours, marketing course subjects 48 hours, marketing specialization 48 hours, and you do have the opportunities to register some of the elective subjects with 12 credit hours. So it is a must for you to complete 1, 2 to 122 credit hours in order for you to graduate and for the Bachelor of Marketing program. Next, please. And these are the uh, MPU subjects with 14 credit hours. Next, please. And for the marketing course subjects, you can see that the total credit hours of the marketing course subjects were by here 48 hours. And one of the marketing subjects uh, at the marketing core level is fundamentals of marketing. Next, please. And the marketing specializations, you can see the marketing it means that these are your major subjects. And we have 48 credit hours. And in this marketing specialization subjects, you will be able to learn the traditional marketing subjects. When I mention about traditional marketing subjects, you can see that the subjects such as consumer behavior, integrated marketing communications, and you can also look at the uh, sales management, but the additional digital marketing subjects, you can see that we have the uh, internet marketing, technology and innovation marketing, seminar in web marketing, and also some other subjects. Next, please. And interestingly, you have been given also the opportunity to register for some of the elective marketing subjects and also the non-marketing subjects. So you have the options over here. So in your program structure, you'll be able to see either elective one, elective two, elective three, and also elective four. So please register the elective subjects according to the list of the elective options. And all students are, are highly advised to register the subjects according to the program structure that have been given on the day one. Next, please. So over here, there were some of the activities uh, whereby participated and also organized by the uh, students, and particular for the marketing students, you can see that not only in within the campus and as well as out of the campus, we do also uh, we brought the students out from the campus to uh, participate in some of the events. Next, please. So with this, this is the end of the uh, very simple briefing for Bachelor of Marketing. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. So if you do have any questions, please uh, drop me an email at bctan at mmu.edu.my. So with this, I welcome all of you to FOM and take care and stay safe. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, next, we'd like to invite the program coordinator for Bachelor of Analytical Economics to present. Dr. Go. Thanks, Dr. Fairus. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Gohan Hua Program Coordinator for the Bachelor of Ethical Economics. So first of all, I would like to congratulate, uh, congratulate uh, those who have chosen to uh, make the right choice uh, to study Bachelor of Ethical Economics programs. So this program actually is the first program that achieved all criterion assessments by ASEAN QA Actual Quality Assessment since 2013 and it is a degree that has significant hours for quantitative and programming subjects, therefore making our graduates a big data ready. Next. And this is a uh, uh, economic, economic staff. So uh, HOD is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Tan Xiaohui, and I'm the program coordinator for the BAE program. Thanks. Next. And uh, this is a program educational objectives as shown on the screen. So uh, among other, this program aims to produce a competent and well-trained economic analyst equipped with economic principles, theories, and technology savings skills in line with the industry's uh, requirement. Next slide, please. And there are eight program learning outcomes that uh, will be achieved by uh, the students upon their graduation. Next. And Bachelor of Ethical Economics uh, basically uh, contains uh, 122 credit hours. So our 122 credit hours 
14 go to MPU subjects, 36 for foundation, 45 for core, 15 for major, and 12 for track subject. Track means uh, it's equivalent to minor or elective for other programs. Next. So this is a list of the MPU subjects uh, which the student have to take and uh, which carry 14 career hours in total. Next. And foundation subjects are listed as uh, below. So which carry 36 credit hours. Next. And there are 45 credit hours that need to be completed by students for core subjects as shown on the screen. Next. And major subjects which carry 15 credit hours. And these major subjects makes our program uh, different or unique compared to other programs. Next. And uh, track subjects. Uh, there are two tracks here. Track means uh, specializations. First is the uh, financial economics. Another one is the de uh, development economics. Students need to choose uh, either one of the tracks and they need to study four subjects out of five as listed uh, as what you can see on the screen. So which carry a total of 12 credit hours. Next. So what is so special about our program compared to others? So there are three main reasons to uh, justify or explain the values of our program. Firstly, our program prepares our uh, data-driven storytellers in line with the Malaysian visions as ASEAN's leading big data analytics solution hub. Secondly, our program provides students with in-depth analysis and data interpretation through courses such as econometrics, multivariate data analysis, business modeling and simulations, econometrics uh, modeling and forecasting, and seminar in analytical economics. And finally, uh, thirdly, our program uh, places a strong emphasis on research skills through courses such as the research project one and two. Next. And these are the some examples of our successful alumni. For instance, Anjit Homi Ramli, who is currently a senior economist at uh, Central Bank, uh, Bank Bengala, Malaysia. Next. And these are some examples of our best students in BAE program who are under Yarasan University Multimedia President Scholarship Award 2018. Just for your information, next. And uh, well, in terms of the job prospectus, uh, our graduate actually can involve in almost every industry. Uh, with the knowledge and expertise in the field of economics, they can become uh, economic analysts, researcher, uh, academicians, financial consultant, bankers or managers, economic development advisors, or even they can work in the public sector. Next. Yeah, that's all of a briefing on this program. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Turgo. Okay, so before we proceed with the BAMS program, uh, for Bachelor of Analytical Economics, I forgot to introduce the academic advisors just now. Okay, uh, can we have a look at Dr. Ong Wei Boon? Dr. Ong Wei Boon, can you just say hi? Associate Professor Dr. Ong Hui Boon. Okay, so she's the uh, academic advisor for Bachelor of Analytical Economics students for this intake. Thank you, Dr. Ong. Uh, next, we would like to invite Dr. Radimala uh, to proceed with the presentation for the final program, Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Fairus. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the program Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. And this is the last program that you will get explanation from Faculty of Management. Uh, may I know any students from BEMS here? Say hi, hello. Hi, okay. Okay, thank you. So let me give some information about this uh, Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. So as you can see, unlike other programs offered by our faculty, this is a different program where you will see many IT subjects. Okay, so I can say this is uh, a child born from marrying the business and IT disciplines. Okay, so you will get uh, business skills also with a good amount of IT skills, especially in digital transformation technology, uh, with the big data analytical skills and also the enterprise resource planning software skill. That means basically how to uh, manage uh, an enterprise, okay, now in the digital era, okay. So as you can see, you will study business subjects, you will study uh, IT skills, big data analytics. Also, if you want to carry on, you can go out with the certification program also after you take this program, okay. 
And regarding the career prospects, um, predominantly you can go as IT business analyst, uh, enterprise resource planning consultant. Also, you can go for big data analyst. Okay. So now you may wondering, big data analytics is only by IT students from IT faculty. How come the management faculty can do? But you see here, since you are learning a very good combination of business management and IT skills, you will be more <clears throat> appropriate to do the business analyst program. Okay. So now you see this business analytical skills we need almost in every industry and every job. Okay. So it's quite important here. So. This slide, you can see the current uh, job requirement of these uh, job positions and their salaries. Okay, just to give you an idea what is the scope and what you will be learning here. Next slide, Chris. Dalila. Okay, so like other subjects, this program uh, the consists of uh, uh, MPU subjects, fundamental subjects, core subjects, and you have specialization and you have an industrial training and also elective subjects. So the total credit hours is 121. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is quite common to all other FOM programs where you need to take MPU subjects, which is for 14 credit hours, which consists of four subjects throughout the semester by following your program structure, you know when to take which uh, subject. Okay, next one, please, Talila. Okay, so this is the fundamental subjects. Totally, you can see uh, it consists for 37 credit hours. If you have a look at the subjects that you study, this fundamental subjects will give you all the skills you require from management, from business, accounting, economics, and marketing. So from th this is the fundamental subject which gives you all the knowledge and skills from business and management point of view. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so you have core subjects, which can of five subjects, uh, 17 credit hours. Some are four credit hours, some are three credit hours. So if you have a look at here, you learn database management system here, data analytics uh, using machine learning techniques, business process re-engineering, introduction to enterprise resource planning and enterprise architecture. As you can see from this subject, you will gain the skills from how do you manage the enterprise level organization or uh, enterprise or using the business process re-engineering, also the enterprise architecture. Also, how to go about with the business analytics. This database management system and data analytics using machine learning techniques will give you the skills to go as a database, I mean, business analyst job prospects. Next one, please. We have specialization subject with uh, eight subjects, totally 38 uh, credit hours. So here you will learn programming skills. So you will have start the programming. Even if you don't have any programming knowledge, you don't have to worry. We will start from scratch. You have the fundamentals of programming, Java. Then you go for intermediate programming. Then you have ABA programming, which is talk about the advanced business application programming. Then in, with respect to the enterprise resource planning, you will study the popular modules from SAP software, which is uh, financial information system, sales and distribution, and materials management. These three are popular modules from enterprise resource planning. So apart from this, you have a final year project too, which consists for two trimesters, right? Uh, so you will be able to take up some uh, project and you will be having a complete project at the end of the semester. So which will uh, exhibit your skills from what you learn from this program. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so you can see our IT academic staff here. All the IT subjects that is uh, taught in FOM will be handled by our IT academic staff. Okay, so you have the details here. Of course, you can get this from our Faculty of Management website as well. Thank you. Next one, please. Okay, so if you have any issues, uh, you can contact uh, Dr. Patrick So, our head of the department of IT unit, or myself, I'm Ratimala Kannan. I'm the program coordinator for BEM. So you can see Dr. Patrick, uh, so turn on the video there. Okay. So other than this, uh, we have a Google Classroom for our BEM students, okay? So you can see the class code here. So we would like all of our BEM students to join this classroom. 
uh, we will post uh, uh, any academic related matters or any other information that we want to pass to the students in this classroom also students also can ask any queries any doubts that they have so that it will be a common platform between the uh, lecturers and the bam students also we have a facebook page uh, we can see facebook.com bams.mmu so you can also go and visit there you can like you can join there okay so that's all from me thank you very much so this is our facebook page yeah thank you so much